Welcome back to Paranormal Perspective. I'm John Lorden, and the person that's going to try to convince me that the paranormal is real is... Christy Arnhart. And we're back. All right, Christy, what do we have this week? This week, I thought that I would talk about shadow people. I don't know if anybody on the show is familiar with shadow people, but... To be honest with you, this topic really freaks me out. I have a personal experience that I'll share that involves this, but. All right, I like it. It's one of those situations. Do you, have you ever felt that you'll bring evil on yourself just by talking about it? Oh, That's, you're not gonna make me bring up the evil broom again, am I? I told you about no. how I'd scare myself with the evil broom. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm glad that didn't keep. <laughs> <sighs> Vera'd have a problem. Yeah. But yeah, this one, it, it freaks me out. Okay. Let's hear it. So, you know, if you watch or you read anything paranormal, you have run into shadow people. I thought that this was a relatively new ph phenomena, but it's not. I mean, there's basically... Shadow people look like someone is standing in front of you or near you. But there's a void. You know, you see the outline of a person, but everything in the middle is black. Which is unsettling enough, you know. You feel like you're being watched. You feel like you're not alone. And people, you know, I've got a couple of videos. I've got some a picture to show. These things show themselves. It's not just a feeling. Now, surprisingly, a number of religions believe in shadow people. And it, it comes in all different forms. Some of them think they're spirits from the other underworld. Some people think they're spirits in a dimension that we can't see. They think they're aliens, time travelers. The one I like is people in a parallel dimension and we're seeing their silhouettes. Mm. I thought that one was really neat. I like yeah. that one a lot. Yeah. But yeah, they've been a staple in folklore. Some of the most famous ones are jinn, which is, you know, the Islamic genie. Mm -hmm. And they are nothing like you hear about on Aladdin. You do not want to mess with a jinn. Do not. Now, the one that freaked me out is actually from the Choctaw tribes, and it's Nalusa Chito. That's their shadow person. Now, it says Nalusa Chito, also known as Impa Shalup, was known as the soul eater, a great black being. If individuals allowed evil thoughts or depression to enter their minds, Impa Shalup would creep inside them and eat their souls. Mm. Yeah, most people from the Choctaw Nation won't even say his name because they're afraid that they'll actually draw that evil to themselves if they do, so. You know, you know. I mean, I'm always looking at kind of the, the literal terminology, like about things that are phrased in that way. and. Quite honestly, I could feel that way about people that turn to crime or people that become murderers or, or things of that nature. Like the, there's some aspect of you have to let a very dark belief structure or this weird fantasy about your life being better. You have to accept that and let it in. And it literally changes you. I think that's why so many people struggle, uh, particularly with mental health, if they've crossed that line. And then even if they serve their time, they come out and they don't really get back into society very easily um so it's interesting to hear about that i yeah yeah I'm, I'm i'm a subscriber to um sharing things in that way also in terms of how we teach others about it because i mm -hmm. think it's easy for someone to kind of envision like oh there's this dark person i mean i've had moments where i have felt like there's someone else inside me or there's you know this i'm acting so out of character it's like something has attached itself to me or, or something like that. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I can definitely appreciate that. And see, that's where I, I think a lot of that can be mental illness for different people, but it not, not always. Yeah. Those are the ones that get me. That's yeah. woo. okay. Now talking about native people reminds me of the legend of the Wendigo. That's another one that terrifies me. Yeah. They're usually in regions where it's real cold and icy, you know, you had or really hot stuff like that, where you have, might have uh, starvation or people who suffer because of it. You're going to get a Wendigo. Mm. They're known to haunt you and devour you if you fall victim to them. They're basically the spirit of winter. 
and it talks about the dangers of selfishness. Like if you cannibalize somebody, you become a Wendigo. And I've actually, there's a couple of cases that I've worked on where eh, I think it might have been a Wendigo. <laughs> Seriously. Well, once again, but, because I, I think I'm so into this world in terms of true crime and constantly looking at that. Yeah, I feel the same way. Like, I feel like when someone does something like that, um, do you lose a part of your humanity? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you do. So I will be doing a follow-up show on Wendigos because right. they're um, freaky. Do you want to go to your examples or do you want to tell us about well, your personal Well, let me, let me get a little bit further. Okay. Now, most people, when they see a shadow person, uh, they're feeling a lot of times it happens when you're having some type of big upheaval in your life. It can be a divorce. It can be death of a family member or a partner or anything like that. It's like, it almost seems like, you know, misery can draw these things on. I know uh, on the science side of this, methamphetamine addicts see a lot of shadow people. Hmm. And I know, you know, meth makes you paranoid. It makes you jumpy and irritable and all these other you know, negative emotions. And all of this seems to play into what they're seeing. So these figures, instead of just like being a part of your environment or walking through, they start to become, you know, malevolent. They chase you. They said they chase you in the street. They run up to you in crowds. And I just, I can't imagine. Woo, wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but usually, yeah, when you have a big tragedy, this is what you've got going on. Now, there's not just shadow people. There's also hat men, is what they call them. And it's it looks exactly like a shadow person. It's the same scenario, but they're wearing a fedora hat. I know that sounds just ridiculous, and it sounds made up. But I see a lot of these pictures, and I hear a lot of people talking about this, whether they have proof of it or not. So I guess, you know, there are more than one. And yeah, if you want to show that first picture. Sure. This first picture, I don't have a year on it, but obviously it was a while ago. In the background, you've got these three ladies taking the picture and you've got a hat man in the background and he has his hand on one of their shoulders. Well, this is the same with everything. There was, they say there was no one else out there with them. They don't have any idea how that could have appeared in the picture. But surprisingly, three days after they took this picture, the woman who had the hat man's hand is on her shoulder. She ended up dying in a car accident. Hmm. So that brings in another aspect of this. They can be harbingers of, you know, things to come of disasters and whatnot. Now I've got a couple of shorts from slap Tam that show people who caught shadow people in their house. And if you'd like to play this first one, YouTube user Jojo Owens was home alone late one night when he suddenly heard some mysterious noises coming from the back of his house. He picked up his phone, and this is what he captured. He goes to investigate the mysterious shadow. there doesn't appear to be anyone or anything anywhere. So who or what caused this creepy shadow? Love to hear your theories on this one in the comments down below. Hmm. And that's usually the I way it is. They just kind of come out, you know, walk through. As if that's not disturbing enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to save my analysis for after. Let's go ahead and... <laughs> So this is the next one. Mm -hmm. For some time now, TikTok user Dino Nugget 741 has suspected their home might be haunted. They started filming this eerie footage after they heard some strange noises happening at night time. Good. I'm standing right here. Did you catch that? An eerie black shadow passes by in the background. <laughs> it's 
So could this home Freaky. genuinely... And right. Thank you, Slap Tam. You ready for my analysis on this stuff? Well, I do have a personal story I could share. So do you want me to share that or give your analysis now? Uh, let's, let's do that first. Let's go with your story and then we'll come back to the analysis here. Okay. Well, this is something that I don't talk about very often. So you guys are lucky. Okay. I have had my own experience with a shadow person and it's something that still bothers me. I used to, well, the first time I ever moved away from home, and I mean, I had lived around my home in different cities, but this was like a four hour trip away. It was the furthest I had ever been. I was in my twenties living with roommates and, you know, we did what girls end up doing. You know, we played with a Ouija board several times, as a matter of fact. I even played with it by myself. I didn't really buy what was going on. And it wasn't until later that I learned they can work as portals. You know, you open the portal by setting down and invoking the spirits. And if you don't end your session correctly, you basically leave that door open. Well, after a few months, we started noticing things happening around the house. The main bedroom in the back had a master closet, a walk-in. The door was always opening and closing. It was always freezing in that closet and the light would kick on and off. You know, I remember being back there one day, getting closed and the door shut on me. It's not like it slammed or anything. There was too much air and suction for it to do that, but it, it shouldn't have even been able to latch, but it did. <sighs> I mean that the master bedroom shared a wall with my bathroom and this bathroom had a mirror that was wall length. You could see yourself on the toilet, getting in the shower, everything. And I started having people who came to the house complain about it. They said, uh, I, I want to look my... at myself on the toilet. Well, That's what they said. well I mean, <laughs> it was a big mirror, you know, yeah, yeah. but <clears throat> people would complain. They didn't want to use that bathroom. They're like, something's not right with the mirror. It freaks me out. I thought I saw something. It freaked me out. Well, there were lots of times my family witnessed this. The roommates witnessed this. There were lots of times I'd be getting into the shower and my shower curtain in the reflection wouldn't close and I would be standing there staring at myself. Mm. Or I'd go to close the shower curtain and I would see my reflection peek around it in a way. I mean, I was just standing there looking, it peeked around, but you know, stuff like that. Oh my God, that's terrifying. We started noticing we had a shadow person as well. We had a front living room, a kitchen, a back living room, a foyer for the front door, and then off to the right, it led to the bedrooms and whatnot. And this, this shadow person would walk back and forth through that doorway. So we would see them going to the bedrooms and the bathroom. We'd see him walking back to the living room. One night he was sitting in the chair in there. Now, no, we didn't take, this was before you had cell phones that could take any kind of accurate picture so we don't have any pictures or anything like that we never flipped on the light and ran at it to try to catch it when you're in the moment doing these things you don't think about it one night i had been sitting in the hallway and i had my little phone typing and of course you know it was like one 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 four four you know taking me forever to type and i got tickled and i stood up and i'm standing there in the dark hallway typing and that's when it hit me it's like, oh my God, someone's standing in front of me. Well, all I could see was black because it was dark. The bedroom at the end of the hall was open with moonlight shining through. And I could see somebody, just a black person taller than me, standing directly in front of me. And they were so close that they were actually looking over the top of the phone that I had in my hands in front of me. And the amount of malice and badness that poured off that thing just it stopped my breath i couldn't do anything i was too terrified i just walked backwards down the hallway watching it until i cleared the corner and ran to the living room until i had some you know somebody show up but it took us a long time to get rid of this thing and to be perfectly honest i've always been terrified that it'll find me again mm. that yeah that is not something that i want to have to go through just as a clarifying statement, no recreational drug use going on around this, right, Christy? <laughs> okay, we'll take that as an answer. Don't say anything. Don't say anything. We will take that as an answer. All right, let's get back to these real quick because you guys know me. My thing is always um, looking at individual instances and trying to to figure it out. Like it, 
it's one thing to conceptualize like, oh, there's this big topic and there's all these different things. They're all pointing to this big truth. I've always been a person that's like, all right, show me the evidence. Let's look at that one instance and, and figure this out. So for, for this video, the one with the sink, first of all, the intent of this, I'm a, I'm a content creator, right? The, mm -hmm. if I was going to make a video like this, and I believe that this was someone that was making a video for this purpose, the way that he startled himself, <gasps> like, and mm -hmm. they thought, oh good, the camera's now facing the wall. They could go ahead and cut through the door and that would let him turn back around and make it look like everything was, was empty. Um, the guy got caught is, is what it seems like to me. You know, I've, I watch a lot of uh, sleight of hand, like magic stuff. I've done the masterclass by Penn and Teller. Like I just, this thing, this particular video feels like a setup for a magic trick that just didn't, well, and, didn't get and pulled off. And both right. of them, I don't know that they're not fake. Um, I yeah. really, they were some of the best examples of what it would be like to be there with a shadow person, them moving around. Yeah, so yeah, this, this one oh, there's of, so many ways you could fake it. Yeah, and this one similar um, I, I don't want to replay it because it would take enough time, but there was several doors in that other room that they eventually mm -hmm. get to. Someone could have just cut through one of the doors. Something else I noticed in that back room, they had a big light rig, like a, like a big, like even bigger video lights than I'm using here. So just once mm -hmm. again, it's, it's different because we are now in an age of content creation where people are getting attention by making like i can't tell you how many times i watch videos on facebook that literally drive me nuts i saw this ridiculous video of this woman that was supposedly proposing to her husband in an airplane the whole thing was faked like they had mm -hmm. a, a legitimate set they were on a set of an airplane and faked this whole thing where she got up into the overhead compartment and she was like dropping rose petals on him and he's getting mad at the guy behind him he thinks he's giving him rose pe like it was it was so <laughs> dopey and faked, but with high production value. Like they had at least eight actors on that set. It was a legitimate airplane set. Um, so that's that's part of what I struggle with in terms of a lot of this modern. And on the, by the same token, to your point, like we have cell phones now, we have cameras everywhere. These moments, if there's real moments out there, someone should be capturing them. And you would think that those would float to the service or to the surface. This kind of dings it for me because you've got these other people that are just hey i can fake something and i can grab some attention and hey look i got twenty thousand views or whatever um mm -hmm. this one i looked at when you first sent to me and the first thing i i was worried about this part two here where it's saying that it's i don't think a person's hand is on anyone's shoulder here but what called my attention about it was a weird shape and i was just thinking is this like a bad photoshop job but honestly, it doesn't look like it. The um, kind of what's happening with the video, and I know it's been distorted because this is on YouTube, it's been screen captured, it's being zoomed in, but the quality of the video that I can see like in the white over here matches the dark over here. So unless this was a video that was made after that special effect was put into place, and even then it wouldn't look exactly the same like it does here. I think this thing is there. I do think this fedora thing is there but I don't think there's a hand that's touching her. I think her shoulder just ends there or she's wearing some kind of clothing that has a hard angle off the shoulder. Um, and you're just seeing the gap because maybe she has a collar, this lady that's in the front right here. Um, this to me looks like lawn art. Have you ever seen those lawn silhouettes of like a cowboy or a Bigfoot and things like that? Um, yeah, and I've actually seen people online, they're like, I caught a ghost. I'm like, no, it's a silhouette, man. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's enough of these. I couldn't find one because basically I feel like it's Humphrey Bogart. I feel like it's a Casablanca standee almost. Uh -huh. um, but I, I wasn't able to find an image that matched it very well. The only other thing I can think of is I saw a little bit of stuff like this when I was in New Orleans of like mu uh, musicians. Like it would be a silhouette like this mm -hmm. and a guy would be holding a trumpet or, or something like that. So yeah. it could be, do, do you know anything about this picture? Like when, where it came from? 
Because if it's New Orleans, no. I'd be like, it's a musician. It's a musician. Walmart. Yeah, there wasn't very much information on it. And like I said, I didn't show you guys these things to be like, here is the proof. Look at this. Yeah. This is what it would look like if you were experiencing it. Yeah. I'm asking you, do you believe these things are possible? Because there are so, I mean, think about old hag syndrome. You know, people feel like they have something sitting on their chest. Sometimes they see a shadow person. I just feel like sometimes your misery draws unsavory characters to you. Oh, I know that's definitely true. That's There's definitely truth in that. Uh, we put it to the audience here at the live recording. Do shadow people exist? 59% don't think that mm -hmm. they do. one percent thinks that they do and honestly i don't know where i put my vote on that i i think you know these examples yeah sure i've got problems with these examples but things like the story that you're telling me don't feel that far off from experiences that i've had before um so yeah i don't know i don't know where i would put myself on that one i'm really i'm gonna ride the, the fence. fence i'm the fan i'm riding the fence on that one <laughs> I'm, a, I'm 50 50 um all right well christy as always thank you for all your research mm -hmm. thank you for sharing this with us today and uh we'll see you again next week on paranormal perspective <laughs>